Spirit, saith the Lord, unto those who are called by my name. Somebody say hallelujah to God tonight. You don't have to be distracted anymore. You don't have to be ashamed about anything. You don't have to let the devil... I know he's tried to blame some of you for this and blames... He's a, he's a liar. He, that's all he does. That's a, he, what's he going to blame you for today? I say, devil, you might blame me for my past. You might even bring it up. And yeah, you, you got all that on me, but let me tell you, you might have all that on me, but God said it's been forgiven. It's been erased. It's not to be ever seen again. It's not ever to be known again because I made up my mind one day at an altar tw almost 25 years ago. Matter of fact, 25 years ago in, in a little church, so I made up my mind that I wanted something greater than sin. I wanted something greater than the devil. I was empty on the inside. I was distracted all my life. But I made up my mind that night when I met the one that truly loved me and I met the one who had the power and I met the one that was real. Praise God. I said, I've got it. I'm not letting go of it. I'm going my God forth. I'm glory to God. I'm going forth with him. I just want to draw near to him. I know some of you think, but you're a preacher. Are you kidding me? I, I didn't preach for a long time. I didn't care if I ever preached. But I, I knew when I met him that something had changed. And then, I don't know how y'all felt. I just want to talk about this. But you remember when you first got saved, did you ever worry that the Holy Ghost would leave you? I, mean, I used to worry all the time. I mean, I used to say, man, are you still here? You know, I, I remember when I first got the baptism and I... And, and I remember it being in, in, in Westside and laying on the floor. And I remember one time I was, like I, I, I was concerned that he wasn't with me anymore. And I, it was almost like something just brushed up against me. And I started speaking in tongues again. It really happened. And I remember times that, that he should have left me. He, I deserved him to leave me for one of the things I'd done. I remember one time I told you all that story. And I'd, oh, I'd done something terrible. I mean terrible. And I went up in that field that day and it was raining in September and it was fall of the year. Remember, I told y'all the leaves had fallen down and on top of that, on top of that one big pile I was sitting there and God said, what are you doing up here? I said, God, look what I did last night. He said, did you not ask me to forgive? Let me tell you what, once you've asked him, it's already done. Oh, yeah, when you ask him from a sincere heart, it's forgotten. He don't want you to repeat it though. He forgave me. He gave me mercy and grace. Now, I'm talked about a healthy heart. <laughs> Come on, give somebody give him a hand clap. <laughs> it says, "Are you a real preacher?" Yeah. It says healthy request, and it says heart health. Healthy request, the quest first, and then it says heart health. Okay. So what does that mean? It means this: keep God, let everything else go. Amen. Make sure you keep God. Amen. We say, well, how do you do that, preacher? Well, the Bible tells you, let your request be made known unto God. Keep God for a healthy heart Amen. and let everything else go. Amen. Don't do it backwards. Don't let God go and do everything else. Come on, oh, somebody. Amen. But keep God and let everything else go. Amen. Let the house go. Let the yard go. Amen. Let the food go. Oh, preacher, i got to have me. I told my wife today, I, I mean, I, I prayed and fasted all day until about 5.30. And I heard Chalupa. <laughs> Keep God. Let everything else go. I want to say it out loud. Come on, I'm being honest. I'm having fun, Bill. Keep God. Amen. Let everything else go. Amen. Remember the guy I told you just come to my church house there about midstream? He's trying to keep me home every Sunday night. He started coming. Every Sunday night. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, it went on for, for a pretty good while. I started noticing. I was getting later and started missing. One night, man, something on the inside of me said, not tonight. He went there just la da 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 And I said, well, listen, I'm going to church. What? Well, you going to church? Yeah, you want to come and go with me? Uh, I said, well, you stay as long as you want. So I'll see you later. I left and went to church. He never come back after that, I don't think. Maybe, maybe he did. I don't remember. But I, I left and went to church. I've had other situations arise, too, that I got out of there. I said, you know, I've got God. I don't need nothing else. I've, I've lived that life. That life's not going to get me nowhere but into hell. That life ain't going to get me nowhere but, but out of fellowship with God. And let me listen to me. I'm just about done. Don't ever get out of fellowship with God because when you do, your life will be miserable. Most miserable people in the world are Christians and they know but they're, but they're struggling and, and they don't want to let go of something and, they, and they, there's no way that you can have fellowship with God. 
There's really no way you can play the part. I, I know. I've done it before. There's no way you can play the part. There's no way that you can, uh, you know, fool. You might fool people for a little while, but you can't fool God. But you play that part. And you're empty and you're miserable and, and, and you feel bad, you know, and, you, and, and really deep down inside, that's a miserable existence. And let me tell you what, there's people tonight that are having a miserable existence because they've not repented. It may look like they're having a good time. It may look like on the outside, I'm saying this for somebody, that everything looks good, but they are, I know, I know, let, let, your preacher knows a lot of things, but they are living a miserable existence. God is eating them alive. They're, you know, they're, there's times when they're alone, man. And, 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 I, just, I don't know, oh man, that, that's a terrible, I've been there, that's a terrible place to be. Keep God. Keep Him. And let everything else go. Let the drugs go. Let the alcohol go. Let everything that, that, that keeps you away from God go. But keep God. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. Keep God. Keep Him. Hold on to Him. Don't let it go. And lastly, there's a spoon on there. and I'm done. A spoonful of the anointing. Oh, glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. Don't you raise your hand. A spoonful. It'll destroy every yoke. That's why you feel so much better when you leave church. My next point, lift every burden. That's why you feel so good when you walk out of here. The anointing, it's like that wind up there. There's a wind of heaven that opens over us. It's not a, just a door, it's a window. God said, I'll open windows in heaven. There's a hole in the sky when you cry. And the great thing about services like this tonight, the greatest part of it is there's two things. His presence, His anointing. You know how it's activated? Your worship and how you receive His word. That's how it's activated. The anointing, listen, look at me. It not only does it come out of you, but glory to God, if you'll raise your hands right now, it comes down upon you. What's that song, if anybody knows it? It was on the song of music, like it was something about a spoonful of something makes the medicine go better. How's that go? Sugar of the anointing. Ooh, spoonful of the anointing makes the devil get away. Makes the devil run away. Hey, makes the devil run away. A spoonful of the anointing makes me have a brighter day. Come on. Just a little bit. That's all it takes. When David found, when God found David. He didn't anoint him like Saul. He didn't anoint him with the vial of oil. Raise your hands, and I want you to see that oil being poured out on you by faith. That's why I want to end this service, what God told me to do. I want you to see that oil. It's, it's in a horn. It's probably in it. I wonder if it was in a shofar and a ram's horn. See it. And, and God himself. Right? I'm not talking about uh, in your lap. I'm talking about over your head. Flowing all the way down on your beard if you got one. All the way down, praise God, on the hem, all the way down your chest, all the way down upon your garment. The anointing of God. The anointing of life. Well, oh, glory to God. Hallelujah, somebody. I feel God. Stand up and give our God praise and thank Him tonight. It'll make you chunky. It'll make you chunky. I'm going to have to use you, Brother Harold. Brother Harold, he's in the hospital that time. I don't know how many days it was. He said, you know what, preacher, I'm looking forward to one thing. I said, what, are you glad? But he said, no, I'm going to go get me some food. Now. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Chunky. And that's the way we want to be with God. We want to be fat with God. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give our God praise in this house. Hey, Chris, let's sing that song about an army rising up one more time. Hey, come on up here with me. Let's give God praise. And I want you to know, tell God right now, say, God, I'm chunky tonight. Tell him right now, say, I'm chunky, praise God tonight. Hallelujah. Chunky, chunky tonight, baby. Thanks for joining with us for the broadcast from New Beginning Worship Center in Greenback, Tennessee. We are located at 6501 Highway 411 South in Greenback, Tennessee. Zip code 37742. Emails may be addressed to nbwcmailbox at gmail.com. Pastor Marcus Severance and the congregation invite you to join with us Sundays at 10 a.m. for teaching, followed by worship services at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m.
We also meet midweek at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're located on Highway 411 in Greenback, Tennessee, just three buildings down from the intersection of Highway 95. If you can't meet with us in person, please join us again next time for our broadcast.